In this video I'd like to have a little look at co-localization. As you can see I've got two images open, a green image and a red image. These are LN cap prostate cancer cells. The green image is the, it shows the location of alpha-1 adrenoceptors and the red image shows the location of GPR-55 receptors. And we're interested in this experiment to determine whether or not the alpha-1 receptors and the GPR-55 receptors are co-localized. They're fairly equal intensity images and when you have two images that are similar in intensity then you could do a red-green overlap and measure the amount of yellow because green plus red gives you yellow and if both signals are similar then you'll get a yellow colour. So the way to do that is to merge the channels. So if we go to colour and we merge channels, I will make my red image my red tiff. Sorry about the noise outside. My green tiff there. I will keep the source images and create a colour image. Now in order to do a colour threshold I need to make this an RGB type image. So I'll go to image, type and make it RGB colour. I can get rid of this image here. In fact I'll minimise these two images so that we're just working with our colour image. Now I want to measure the colour threshold. In previous videos we've looked at intensity threshold measurements and here I'm looking at colour. So I want to measure, I want to measure the colour threshold, or just, adjust colour threshold. Okay. Now what we've got here is a set of calipers. And I've got my threshold colour set to white, but I'm looking at all of the image there. What I want to do is I want to bring these calipers in that you see here and select only the yellowish colour. So I'm going to suggest that the co-localization is effectively in the yellow colour here. Okay, so I'll select that and it shows me in yellow here my co-localized region. If I want to know the area which is co-localized, I simply measure it. And we see down here the area of the co-localized region. Now in order to determine this as a percentage of the entire set of cells, I would need to threshold the whole set of cells, so I'll just move this all the way back to here and to here. Select all of the cells. Let me just select that and then measure my analyze menu. And down here we see the area of the total set of cells and here is the area of the co-localized yellow region and you can make a simple percentage calculation in order to determine what percentage of the image was yellow. This is not really an ideal way to do co-localization. It's better to use a correlation analysis and that's what I want to show you next. So I'll get rid of that, I'll get rid of the composite image and I'll bring back my red and green images. Okay. What I'm going to use is a plugin called JACOP, which is, stands for Just Another Co-Localization Plugin. I suppose the, the creators of the plugin thought that was quite humorous. I suppose it is in some ways. Okay. So here's the information that we need to give the JACOP. There's a lot of uh, options here and I'm really only going to choose the costus threshold, the cytofluorogram. I'll maybe come back and do these other ones, but for the moment I just want the Pearson's and the Mandel's coefficients. Okay, so if I'm using the costus automatic threshold, it will decide, it will, the, the algorithm will, will guess at what it thinks is a good threshold. I could, of course, alter that a little bit. I wanted to and that's up to you probably best to to make them both the same 98 there I'll make them 100 I'll just go with that 100 and 101 just for the purposes of showing you 
Okay, so I've, what I will do here is I will measure the co-localization only under the thresholded region. And I will analyze this. Okay, so the key values that I'm looking for here are the Pearson's coefficient. Pearson's coefficient here of 1 would mean, of 1.0, would mean there is perfect co-localization. Pearson's coefficient of 0 would mean there is no or random co-localization. And a Pearson's coefficient of negative 1 would show a complete lack of co-localization. In fact, it would show that the two signals effectively repel each other. Or they, they're, they, they never occur in the same place. Mandel's coefficients can be quite interesting and can be useful here because it shows you the fraction of A that overlaps with B where 1.0 would be a perfect overlap or the fraction of B that overlaps with A so how much green overlaps with red or how much red overlaps with green and these values could be of use to you. Now one thing that I like to look at is the cytofluorogram which is a plot of the intensities of the green pixels plotted against the intensity of the red pixels and for some reason in my PC here the cytofluorogram doesn't show up particularly well so I'm going to use a different program to show you the cytofluorogram this is just the Costas map that was used this could be quite interesting here which shows you the Pearson's coefficient uh, value as you use different threshold values but I don't think we'll use that for a moment okay let me get rid of the Jacob and I want to show you one final plugin, which is the co-localization finder. Now, if both of the images are absolutely identical, as I'll show you here, if I choose, if I make an analysis of the co-localization of the green image against the green image, these are identical images. And as you can see, what you get is a straight line. Okay, that would be perfect co-localization. But of course we want to do two different images. So I'm going to choose the red image against the green image. And then we see a better pixel fluorogram here. Now what this pixel fluorogram is showing me is that it's quite broad. And if it is a broad cloud like this, it suggests that there's quite a bit of noise in the image. And certainly that there isn't a perfect co-localization. And these pixel fluorograms or scatter plots can be very useful and particularly if you were looking at live cells where you had co-localization changing over time then a map of the, this um, if you were to make a, an animation of the changes in the shape of the scatter plot over time it could be quite informative about your type of co-localization so that was a fairly quick run through of a few different ways of looking at co-localization. There are lots of co-localization plugins allowed, um, available for ImageJ. Um, have a try at them and see how you get on. Okay, thank you.